the South Bank of the Thames and rejoin Jane Corbyn. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, David. I've got uh, Ken Livingstone and Jeremy Corbyn here with me. We're going to talk further about the position that Neil Kinnock now finds himself in. Ken Livingstone, George Galloway has said that Mr Kinnock should go and there should be a contest as soon as possible between Gordon Brown and John Smith. What do you think? Well, it's not a statement I would have made. So I think that but the do you agree with it? Well, I, I expect Neil Kinnock will stand down in his own time. But I think the whole party accepts he's fought a very hard and courageous campaign, whatever differences I might have had with him about individual policies like the bomb or whatever. And we don't want to get in some squalid pushing and shoving. We've four to five years till the next election. We need to work out why we lost. I think it's because of Neil Kinnock. Everyone private is to me. We lost because we got our tax policy wrong. Our figures don't add up. We said we wouldn't cut defence. We said we wouldn't devalue the pound. Yet we're going to spend more on pensions, more on child benefit, more on education more on investment. None of this adds up and I think people wanted to know how we were going to pay for all of this. And the whole front bench and broadly most of the party conference have gone along with this line. We've actually got to look at the policy first. Once we've worked out a policy that can win, then we can work out who should actually lead the party. Jeremy Corbyn, what do you think uh, Neil Kinnock's future should be or is likely to be? I would have thought he will resign maybe later this year or next year and there will then be a leadership contest. But I agree with Ken, it's not just the issue of the individual. The issue is the policies on which this party is to go forward. We but didn't at long, any stage propose arms cuts But you've long had election. your differences with Mr Kinnock himself. You see him as espousing that moderate cause which you believe hasn't done the Labour Party any favours. Isn't it time for him to go? He's failed. He has put forward the policy changes in the party which have moved us in a more right-wing direction. He's the one who has not put forward a policy of arms cuts, for example, and nuclear weapons. But I think we need to have a policy debate and policy discussion within the party rather than be plunged into an immediate leadership election. Because See, all these policies, every single member of the shadow cabinet's voted for them on the NEC. Absolutely. I mean, There's no all the trade union block votes were lined up, except on the defence cuts issue. Um, it's wrong now, so oh, it's all one individual's fault. But Ken, when do you think he will go? Well, I don't think there's going to be any pressure on him from individual MPs. It might be one or two. I mean, he has earned the respect of the party. He must take this decision in his own time. We've got enough to get on with now assembling our forces in Parliament to try and prevent a lot of very unpleasant policies like the anti-refugee bill being rushed through again. Well, and also the need for the party to be a serious campaigning force. Mm. I mean, Neil did put one point very well this morning. He got back from Islam when he said, we've got to defend the health service, mm. defend housing, defend education. London is full of homeless people. People. What are Ken, we going to do for them? If you're right about the timetable, you say there's no hurry. Um, July is when the leadership uh, election could be, and uh, the conference in October would decide it. Do you think that's a feasible timetable? I mean, there's two obvious things. One is that we, we have a leadership election this October. Um, but it might be that after a few days have passed, the party and the trade unions will think, we want some time to digest this. We were told if we get rid of our unilateralism, if we drop our um, commitment to public ownership, we've done all these things on the promise that it would win us a victory. And it's actually, this is the worst victory than we've had in the last two elections. This is a victory fought after the worst year for the British economy since 1931. We should have had a majority of 100. No government in British political history or anywhere in the West has gone into an election with this economic record without being defeated. This is a much more serious defeat for us than last time. Thank you both but very much. Jane Corbyn, thank you very much. Let's join now 